All right, so just a quick video today. We want to talk about the HTML input element. So what I have right here, the input elements, the pattern attribute that you can put inside of these to do regular expression pattern matching for validation purposes. So support for this is excellent. Uh, the last browser to add, last of the major browsers to add support was Safari, and that was way back in 2017. So even before I started making regular videos on this channel, uh, Safari had support for this. So we have here uh, a great website, regexr.com. This is a great place for testing regular expressions. So if you have them, you want to test them out. Up here at the top, you write the pattern that you're looking to match, and it will highlight inside your content here anything that matches that pattern. Now, if you don't know how regular expressions work, there's a link there at the top to another video that I've done. Actually, there's two videos that talk about regular expressions and how to do that. So in this video, we're just going to talk about how to apply them inside our HTML. So we have three text fields, a field that is input type equals email and input type equals tel, T-E-L for telephone. All right, let's jump into our code here. Right now, I've got a JavaScript. All I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the form from submitting. If it gets to this point, if the submit event fires, that means everything in the form was fine, and we'll see this alert pop up. That's the only reason I have it is so we know that everything passed the validation. Uh, some minimal CSS just to align the boxes. And here we have it. So right now, in my inputs, like I said, there's type text, 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 email, and tell. Those are the five. We've got IDs and names on all of them. There's no validation. There's no required attribute to say that it's a required field. There's no pattern attribute. So if I come in here and I click the send button, yes, it goes through and it says the form is fine. So what I want to do is I'm going to add required onto each one of these. So we can do that. We'll just take required and we'll paste it into each one of these input elements. Save that. And now when we try to submit, it will start at the very top. And as soon as there's one that does not meet the requirements, so it has to have something in it. It has to have something in it. It has to have something. Uh, this one, emails are interesting because there is some pattern matching that does take place by default. The browser will actually say, this has got to be an email address. So if I just throw filler text, it's going to tell me, hey, you've got to do at least the minimum of this. And there I've got something inside the phone. That's all we have to do for required is just have something there. I don't want just something. I want to actually match this. So inside of each one of these fields, we add a pattern attribute. And whatever we put inside of here, this is going to be the regular expression. So I'm going to put this inside. We'll do the first couple here. And I've got these patterns that I want to do actually already made. So I just have to copy and paste them. So we've got the one for name. And what I'm looking to do is what it says in the title here. I want to have something that is between one and 30 characters and then a space and then something between one and 30 characters. And for the zip code, this is the US postal zip code. And this can be either five characters or nine characters, nine digits, or five digits, a hyphen, and then four digits. So that's the pattern that we're matching for these two. So let's go back into the browser and we can test that out. So got to put something, I type this in, and please match the requested format. And that is the title attribute is showing up inside of here. So if I put a space somewhere in between there, it works. That matches the pattern. So for the zip code, uh, we say five digits. So let's try five letters. No, doesn't. And there is my pattern. So it's going to be digits. So there's five. Yep, that's going to work. Or five followed by four digits. Yep, that's going to work as well. Postal code. So we'll add a pattern in here for the postal code. Uh, 
we'll add this pattern in here. There we go. So postal code, this is a Canadian postal code. It is a letter, a digit, a letter, followed by an optional space, and then a digit, a letter, and a digit. And the letter has to be one of the ones that are listed here. So back in here to try something, space, something, five digits, and then the postal code, letter, number, letter, space, digit, letter, digit. So in my pattern, the way I have this defined, so right here, all these are uppercase letters. So with that in the pattern, I need to put the uppercase letters in here. So like that, we could make a case insensitive, but there we have it. And then email address, I have no pattern, but it's gonna prompt me automatically for something that's reasonably close to an email address. That's gonna be enough for what we're doing right here. And then for the phone number, I wanna have something that is three digits, and then a hyphen or a space or a period, and then three digits, and then four digits at the end. So in my phone, I will add a pattern. That's my dog yawning. So there we are. We've got three digits and then a hyphen. This is a period or a space. So three digits, three digits, four digits with a hyphen period or a space between. And there we have it. And success, we're through. So that is the pattern attribute. And that's it. That is HTML pattern attributes that you can add into your form elements. So if you know the regular expressions that you want to apply, simple enough, paste them inside of here, and there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. I answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.